Hi, Mary. Thank you for accepting my uh, invitation. It's um, a very special moment. This is the second super talk hosted by uh, UFI China Club. I know you have been really, really busy. So again, thank you for this, uh, 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 you know, uh, talk. Uh, so my question is, how does COVID-19 impact the U.S. event and exhibition industry? Okay, well, first of all, thank you for inviting me to, um, to your talk with the China Club. Um, it's, it's great to reconnect and uh, see you again. And um, so I appreciate the invitation. So how, how has COVID-19 impacted the U.S. trade show industry? Well, in March, it just came to a complete halt. It has been um, an interesting six months uh, with major events that were guaranteed on a calendar to take place all been cancelled or postponed. Um, we've done the same and probably won't have any for the rest of the year. Um, there may be one event that or two events that we could run at the end of the year, but for the most part, 2020 has been a huge loss for the for the exhibition industry. Um, it, it has also been an unusual situation to manage because if you look at the US market, we have no top-down policy. We have no federal mandate about how many people can be in a building together, about how we can run events or not run events. Each state is different, so it has actually been confusing. It's, you know, at times to know how we actually do manage to run events again. Um, Every state has a different policy, has a different reopening, has a different attitude towards um, how, not just events, but how life is taking place. And in many cases, we've had to roll back reopenings and reduce, like if you look at California as an example, there's no plans to have, no discussion about hosting shows in 2020. And other cities, there were events that took place yesterday um, in Florida. Small events, yes. And I've been hearing about a couple of events that may take place in Las Vegas um, throughout the, towards the end of the year. Um, actually, some in October. So we're watching very closely how the rest of the world is reopening. Um, we're obviously looking at your shows in China uh, has been very positive for us to see. Um, and then looking at Europe reopening, you know, Ufi uh, Kai today was in Berlin at a show. So things look different, but the impact has been enormous on our, on our industry in the United States. Yes. Thank you for introduce uh, the situation in the U S uh, that's also uh, uh, bring me to the very beginning of we start to open up the China trade show uh, industry, uh, start with a kind of a try out uh, events in Changsha and then later on a real international show in uh, Shenzhen. Uh, so we have been uh, 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 going going through that uh, careful, uh, difficult situation uh, to start up again our uh, events industry. Uh, recently, China is doing quite uh, well. Uh, a lot of show uh, opening with uh, some experience gathered from the very first shows. So I know you have a lot of uh, uh, challenge uh, so what is the biggest challenge U.S. industry facing? What steps the U.S. events industry uh, take to mitigate impact of the COVID-19? Okay, so there's been a variety of things that the industry has done. I will say the first thing they've done is collaborate very closely. They have been very open with each other about what's happening with events 
Um, they've been very inclusive in conversations. Um, I would say also they have, the industry itself has leaned into obviously digital events or digital products, more webinars, more, there's been a real drive to keep connection with your buyers and sellers and to be able to, to be able to, to keep the connection, not just with your customers, but, but in other events, we have been able to do a lot more where there's content. So it's, as an example, the Confex model. So the conference content, we've been working towards virtual events. And, you know, I am part of a lot of groups where we have a discussion, is virtual the right word? But for, for today's purposes, I'll use virtual, um, where we're just trying to bring industry information, um, like businesses are still continuing. So how do we help them facilitate conversations? How do we help them network? How do we help them get the information that they need that we typically provide at a conference event, as an example? So there's been a lot of that and a lot of discussion in, in the exhibition industry about that. Um, we've really looked at ways that we can... Um, support each other in opening events so when i say support each other it's been a lot of work with the venues that you work with there's not there hasn't been the same this is how we do things type of attitude it's mm -hmm. been very much if you've got something a unique situation it's been discussed and people are really the, the industry has been very open i would say that that's probably the one thing that will drive us forward much more quickly when we do reopen but i would say the majority have tried to look for ways to reinvent themselves and to be able to keep in contact and keep close to their customers uh, their exhibitors and their attendees um, as well as their suppliers there's been there's been uh, a lot of concern about the supply chain um, in our industry. So that benefit from exhibition, the decorators, the um, AV people, all of that. There's, there's been a lot of concern about keeping in contact with them as well. So, so I think the end, so to answer your question, as directly as I can, I think the industry has has come together to try and mitigate the negativity and the problems that COVID has cost, caused us. Um, for revenue, it's the virtual events, as I just said, and people going online. But the third part is really looking at how to prepare well for the future. And yep. I feel that most companies most trade show companies, they're just waiting, waiting to reopen and hoping that as soon as we can open, reopen safely, that we get back much more quickly. So I think the mitigation is more for, for getting back to in our, in our future, um, our future opportunities. Thank you, uh, Mary. Uh, you know, you and me are both on a CISO board. I totally can experience uh, what you just said uh, uh, about the openness of the U.S. industry. And really, this is something uh, uh, the other uh, national uh, trade show industry can learn, especially the Chinese uh, industry. We can learn a lot, lot from uh, how the U.S. Uh, industry open to each other, working together to uh, uh, be ready for the, the, the future. Really, that's a really good thing. What will happen to the U.S. events industry when the lockdown lifted? What is your think that before foreseeable way of the opening up of U.S. trade show, uh, probably the, this could be like mostly next year. So uh, there's a part of me that hopes that the human desire 
um, to be face to face and meet people again, that that drives the reopening quicker and, and the return to business much more quickly. And I think that that will happen. I have a few friends who said I'm crazy, <laughs> but, um, but that it, it would be slow. Uh, I think my observation has been that there, there's a change of sentiment every three or four weeks. Mm-hmm. At the beginning, when we all collaborated, and I, and, and I would say, I, I'll give a shout out to Ufi and all the work that they've done. They have talked about um, collaboration, not competition. And that's what we've seen. But when the events reopen, I think we will have different safety protocols. We'll be much more transparent with the cleaning protocols that go around a show. I think our industry has learned a lot. Personally, I, I feel that they have learned a lot that we don't have anyone advocating for us. So while the associations, and, and there's been a step, you've seen, you've seen that with Go Live Together, um, with working with SISO, working with the US Travel Association, we've, we've had to come from behind and advocate for ourselves to show that events, trade shows are more controlled than a concert or more controlled than um, going to the supermarket or to the cinema in a short period of time that, or a sporting event. That, that the events will, we, we can manage this. So I, see, I do see some smaller events happening. You know, it's going to take a while to get back to the large events um, that we've had. Dep- and I think that that depends on the industry as well and how comfortable the industry is. Um, I would say that the transparency is going to have to happen, as I said, with the cleaning and the safety and the hotels and and how many people are in the building. Um, I think we're we're going to be much more managed and we are going to manage more the physical aspect of being at the event. It's not just about seeing products. It's going to be keeping your customers safe and healthy as well. And I also, I, but I do think, um, I, I think that as we drive forward and start to reopen events, I think I do feel, and maybe it's maybe it's my hope <laughs> that people will want to get back quicker. And I am starting to see, like I, when I said about things changing every three to four weeks, it was about reopening events, and then it was about customer confidence. And I think that that's going to be the key: are customers going to be confident enough to come back? And I think that that's going to vary industry by industry. Uh, are the, and I my notice or my feeling on what the sentiment is right now is that people are eager to start planning and for 2021. I don't know if when the clock strikes midnight on December 31st, if everything's going to go back to a wonderful year for 2021. I don't think that that's, that's going to be the case, but I also think that there, there is a desire to move forward and it may be that we are in better shape. Like if we look at the possibility of a vaccine before the end of the year, you know, you've got some people who won't leave their homes until there's a vaccine. Um, you've got like the wearing of masks in the US, you know, very common in Asia, that's becoming more of a norm. Um, in, in not in every area, but but in many. So all of those little subtle changes will become our norm. And then I'm hopeful that, you know, when that rapid testing um, will help. Like, I, you know, the, the experience of going to an event where you know that if everyone is tested on the way in and you know that that event is safe and the people who have tested positive for COVID are being taken care of by health authorities or or having to go into quarantine or whatever whatever the protocol mandates um i think people are going to feel very comfortable 
if we can guarantee that there's no positive case in this room. You know, that feeling is going to be, be strong and I think we'll take some of the focus off, off what we have been going through. It, it, it sounds sometimes to me a little bit far-fetched, but, you know, you're used to, you're getting, we're getting more and more used to it every day. Yes, uh, you know, uh, that's also uh, remind me the experience in China. Uh, you know, uh, we uh, see many shows uh, opening at the moment in China, uh, some really big shows, uh, but uh, basically the show is only, only gathering the national exhibitors and the visitors because of the uh, traveling policy and the border control. So I also assume at the beginning of uh, the opening up in U.S., I guess uh, the traveling control still will be there, more or less. And in the meantime, we also see uh, uh, the trend of the, in, you know, uh, the reconstruction of the global supply chain led by USA. So these two elements will impact our industry. So what is your vision, uh, the impact of our industry caused by these two, the reconstruction of global supply chain and also uh, uh, the, 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 the traveling uh, policy will still uh, 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 lock uh, the travel among uh, the different nations? You know, that's a, a good point um, that they, I, I do think many events, um, the international events, the, the truly large international events will be impacted. I don't see that happening as much in Europe because of the Schengen Agreement where there's free travel between the Schengen countries. So that gives me some hope. I think what I've heard actually today that some countries are looking at reducing the quarantine time. Um, are new, you know, there's so many new terminologies have, have come out of the situation, new normal, all of that. I think the new normal will be that you will have to prove and be tested frequently. Um, I th think that you're going to see you know, we, when I just mentioned a few minutes ago about the rapid testing and knowing that everyone who's come in is, has te into your event has tested negative, that 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 feeling will be good. But I also think that that would bring back bring back confidence to our audiences that you know you've got the where there aren't travel bounds, and I think that the the world will come to a, a decision where. Yes, it's on lockdown now, but that that will ease at some point. And if we are looking at 2021, there is a certain time in 2021 where I, I honestly see that that, that will ease. Um, look, I'm thinking of trying to attend the event in Switzerland for UFI um, because, first of all, I'd like to get back to an event. Um, but... The, tra the travel impact, I think, might be more short term, short to medium term. It may be another year, but but I think it's more short term. The global supply chain, an entirely different story. I think it takes a long time for a supply chain to adjust to to what happens. Um, I've seen it with. Um, I'll give you. A couple of examples. We have a running event. The running event is for the large brands of running shoes, for the for the really serious runner. Their supply, because um, factories manufacturing was closed in China during the lockdown. Now there's there's demand. Um, you know they're trying to fill their inventory, but our customers coming back as quickly. We've got the solar and like with the I'm more leaning towards now the tariff discussion. Um, 
but the the supply chain it takes a long time to get a supply chain moving it doesn't just happen overnight so that that i'm seeing that impact events um i'm seeing it impact like the not just events being closed but um the plans for the future because many of those com- smaller companies are going out of business or may not survive this if they're not already in in uh some sort of trouble but and there's been some discussion about when do you see events coming back and people were saying october november i think they were hopeful october november i think the us is going to be the last market to come back um but that belief really seems to stem from when we need them to come back but our customers need our events to come back as well so that they can reestablish where they get their supplies from where they get the product from um you know what how uh, but it it, do, it it will take a long time for that to reestablish um or to, to become clear to, you know how things are are improving or changing or adjusting um i think it, it's that's going to take a while yes i agree with you the restructuring adjustment of the world uh supply chain probably is more as a positive influence to our industry because the company has to uh gather more supplying and demanding information to uh, let's say survive or to develop their business in the new normal new structured uh, uh chain so our industry can play a quite important role in this trend so that's my observation so my last question uh mary as the ufi chair lady what is your vision of the future changes of our industry after a global epidemic well as i mentioned um i think i think the safety protocols will become second nature to us mm-hmm. i think the the cleaning the how we travel um how we run events how we manage people how we manage registration like will will that be touchless registration um i think we will rely on technology even more than we have i do foresee that that um, virtual events and now we have to have them we rely on them So I think that the positive that would come out of that is we will have much more connection much more frequently with our customers not just once a year. I think we will be able we'll be a little bit more nimble than we've been. Um I think there would be an acceptance of how shows look and are run that would be different because it really will be as as you just said what is positive for our industry this global supply chain shift will be positive for our industry but i think it will make people realize the importance of events i would say that the one positive thing that or there's been many silver linings with this but but one positive thing is our customers appreciate the value of of our face to face events even more than they ever did i don't think they understood just how important they were before I think for the small to medium size enterprise events are much more vital to their success. I've seen it in my own customers commenting on a story saying I relied on that event for my annual business. I relied on that, on that event for new business. And they'll see events more as problem solving as opposed to just going to an event and and you know in tougher times you know the last the financial crisis as an example the large events you know if you had the number one and number two event in your industry 
more than likely you took a less of a hit. I think the smaller events would probably come back, come much more quickly. There'll be some more regionalization. There'll be some more um, different formats. So, so I, I, while well, I see the changes, the practical changes on cleaning and all of that, we'll have to be transparent about, but the business changes, I think the value of our industry will be much more greatly recognized and, and understood and, and, and appreciated. I think, I think companies will have a desire to participate in events, um, with very specific goals in mind. And so I'm seeing some of that shift as I'm, as I'm talking to customers who, who I've known for many years in a variety of industries. Um, I'm hoping that, that the continued collaboration um, that we're going through right now, that that becomes, look, we were collaborative before and we were very open before as an industry. I think we'd be even more, more so in the future. I think there's very much um, a desire to share information and the camaraderie we have like the, with friendly comp competition. I think that's even stronger now. And, you know, as UFI president, you know, there were lots of events that I missed out on this year, like everybody else. But I feel like I've actually gotten to know many people better um, throughout this process because I'm, I'm seeing them more often on board calls or on meet, at different meetings or um, webinars and so on. And I think that, that that will continue. I think I think we'll come out hopefully stronger um, than, than we were prior to this. And we okay. and we were I do think that there was much more to for our industry as well that you know we talk about people who how did you get into the trade show industry well we all fell into it you know nobody there's very few people I've met who planned to get into the trade show industry I think now we're much more in the spotlight um, it's a fun industry to be a part of and I think that 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 would be highlighted as well. So um, I guess I'm hopeful for industry energy um, for the future as well. Yeah, thank you, uh, Mary. It's, um, it's a very special moment as industry leaders. Uh, there's many things for us to think, to communicate and to cooperate. I totally agree with you uh, in the coming months. Uh, UFI will be very important together with our colleagues like SISO as an industry association that we could bring people together and uh, to communicate, uh, to cooperate and to facing the, the new future. Uh, and our, the DNA or the nature of our business is also to bring the industry together. And I also agree with you that um, uh, it is difficult, but uh, the hope is there, and uh, we have to, uh, for you know, adapt ourselves and uh, catch some very important, uh, you know, uh, uh, trend like um, uh, how uh, the new model of uh, uh, you know uh, 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 cleaning, sanitary could be really the new standard of the industry to make people feel safe to join us, uh, but also the new connecting way, like instead of once a year or few years in the world to the physical meeting, but now we have more tool like a virtual digital way to bring people even closer and more frequently meet and communicate. So thank you for your experience sharing and uh, <laughs> following to your thought we it's much clear for me but also for our colleagues uh that uh, 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 uh thinking and seeing uh the future of the industry thank you thank you david I, I there is one thing um i think i'd like to add 
and it's just sort of crossed my mind when you said about the new communication and the, the way we we can interact with our customers um, ar- around the world. The other thing that's come out of this that is positive is we now have, because of the way the events industry has moved to accommodate virtual and digital connections with our customers, we've opened ourselves up to a new audience as well who may never go to an event. So I have one um, event that we have something like 400 um, new attendees. So it's a conference, uh, 400 new attendees that would never travel and they've just signed up for a virtual event only. So I think we have to look for the opportunities as well. And it's been tough for our industry um, it's been a, a very hard year and you're right about the uncertainty that we have faced that we are going through now and making decisions about the future and so on that I think our, our industry has proven that we are resilient as well um, and I'm one of the things I am concerned about but I think it's going to happen is that there's consolidation in every industry that will change the look of business but that happens that's happened before and events have been around for a long long time and i'm sure they will be again for a yeah. long time sure uh I, I, yeah definitely this um you know time is really short for such uh, a quite big uh, topic and i think uh, that's also proof that uh, people need more communication and I already uh, looking forward yes. to seeing you and other colleagues during one of the coming uh, physical meeting uh, of Ufi. Really looking forward. And in the meantime, I'm also looking forward to visit US, visit one of your show. And meantime, to welcome you, come to China to one of our Chinese shows. So that really proves that uh, face-to-face is the key of our industry. And every human being need that. And our industry is strong and we can serve the human, you know, uh, demand very well and build the trust among the industry. So we should be confident. We should work together. And, uh, yeah, really, uh, thank you, uh, for sharing your, 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 your mind and your, uh, you know, uh, uh, thought with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you and uh, see you soon.